next, Lil? The eternal love affair between a cat and a cardboard box. <laughs> hey, Lil. We've actually just come up here to pick up some leeks for dinner. I'm trying to clear the leek bed. So I had this whole bed that's covered with the EnviroMesh of leeks this year. It was too many. I won't be doing the same again this year. But they've started to go to seed where they will produce the big flower spike out the top. And it's not like garlic where you can eat the flower spike and then the garlic's still fine. With the leeks, once they start going that way, they're a real tough nightmare. So we're just working our way through these as fast as possible at the moment. So currently it's leeks with everything. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's actually Monday, so the vlog hasn't gone out for onto st standard YouTube uh, yet. It's gone out for Patreon, but not for standard YouTube. But I have nipped on because I'm doing something that I didn't think I would ever agree to do. Um, I've somehow said yes to doing a live with Tony C. Smith. He of the talking quicklies. So uh, <laughs> I'm equipped. I've got my setup. I got a lot of lights because when we did the test, I was practically in the dark. So I've got all the lights out. I've basically like raided uh, the whole of the house looking for lamps to kind of like shine in my eyes. So if I look a bit like it's because I got a lot of light in my face. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm about to do a live. There will be a link to the video under here. Uh, yeah, when it's actually up and out and about and all the rest of it. Can you tell I'm terrified? <laughs> I don't even do lives on Instagram or I don't even do stories on Instagram other than just like photos. Wish me luck. I haven't used any feed this year because I've planted them into no-dig beds, so. Do we wait and see what, what the old boy's onions are like? Yeah. Is it too, it's too early for aphids, is it, do you think, or? No, I've got aphids, I've right. got aphids on it. Hey. <laughs> you actually sound really quite proud of that, Jess. Doing bunny rabbit? Are you in the box? Are you in the box? So yeah, the live went all right. I will let you know when I'm doing the next one with a bit of prior warning. Now I know it's not quite so horrifyingly scary. This, on the other hand, is horrifying. These beetroot that I planted out, what in last week's vlog, so just at the end of last week, uh, the badgers have been round. Uh, they're looking for worms and grubs and things in the compost, and they just uproot everything which is charming. I've already put this lot back in once and they're back out again. So we're gonna try and think of a way of covering them this morning. We might use a bit of mesh that we have resting on one of the other beds. That's this stuff. So we use this mesh all the way across the allotment. I get asked about it a lot. It's just steel mesh. And I will put a link underneath, just an Amazon link to where you can buy it from. It's not where we got it from because we got it as a job lot years ago from a place that was closing down. And if you were gonna buy it new, it is a bit of an investment. But if ours is anything to go by, it really does last indefinitely. And we use it for so many things. This thin stuff that's this kind of grade we use as the cages over the beds. So they just tuck in on the raised beds edges. We use the thicker grade to build the fruit cage and the chicken cage. It's just incredibly useful stuff. And I get asked about it so much. So there will be a link underneath if you're interested in having a look. But we do have a couple of these off cuts and I've just laid them across the top of the beetroot. They're not pushing down on them. They're just like a couple of centimetres up. And I'm just hoping it's going to deter the badgers from snuffling around in there and uprooting the beetroot until they've got their roots really anchored in and they're not going to be just turfed out every time they're disturbed.
Oh, that's bright. It's a good start. Right, we've still got Bug House up there. Yeah. And what else are we going to do today? Right. We're going to do the tree. Yeah. Random tree. I'm going to clear the carrots. Are we going to put the cover on the carrots? Yes, we're going to make the cover, cover up for the carrots. And I've already got sifted um, compost that we can put on the top of that to plant the next lot in. Beautiful. Okay. Is it too early for carrots? Yet? No. Nope. It's very withered. It isn't, but we'll be ready for it. <laughs> right, so that's a job for you. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's, job. But that's not what I'm first going to do, is it? What was I going to do first? Um, I might clear the rest of the leaves. Right, clear the leaves. And mulch that bed. Right, okay, that's going to be done. We have to move all the and then and then we need to move the stuff where the three-legged chair is, so we can get uh, the mesh out. out. That's probably enough to be getting on with. I think, think so, yes, I do. I do want to put some of those salvias in as well. Yes, okay. I'm going to take my jumper off, I think. Is it quite warm? Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's a best case scenario uh, to-do list for this morning's activities. I want to start with the carrots though because um, we're doing a lot of clearing actually at the moment. So unexpectedly we've got loads to eat. <laughs> Normally at this time there's not a lot around but we've got like about a third of a bed of leeks that still need eating and we need the bed for other things and also the leeks are going over like I said the other day so they need to be eaten pronto. This whole bed of carrots are starting to sprout again from the top, so they're going to get a hard core, so we've got to take these guys out and eat them. And then once I've got all these cleared out, I'm going to cover the box that I made the other day, the frame, and then we will be ready to get going sewing some more. feels good to tick things off a list right this is the next thing on the list which are these it's just this tree which we've got growing all the way along the side of our plot on the school side and they've got these terrible feathery roots and even though we've got weed proof matting under here they've come up inside the poly tunnel and they have these huge roots which i'm just going to pull out now and they grow off them like these big spurs and i'm worried it's going to take out a lot of this parsley and the chard because it's running that way but look at this right this is what the roots look like i've just pulled this one out look at that that is that root has come up from over the other side of the school and it's just it's manic it's such a bugger this it's, that's part of the reason that we've got all of our buildings and things on that side of the allotment because the ground is completely riddled with this stuff and all you can do is just keep hacking back at it luckily we actually only lost one parsley in me pulling that out so that's not bad Okie dokie, I'm going to cover the carrot root fly box frame thing that I made last week with EnviroMesh. So the EnviroMesh is fine enough to keep the carrot root fly out, which is the main aim of the game. And I'm going to use this scrap piece, which is the leftover from when we covered the bottom of my divan bed, which also became a frame. <laughs> and in the meantime, girlies are getting a treat, something to play with. Mum has cleared the big bundle of lamb's lettuce that had gone to seed out of the polytunnel and we're going to give it to the girls to have a bit of a mess around with. What's this, girlies? What's this I bought you? Look at that. And this. Hey, what's that, Wellers? It's a big tangle mess to play with, girlies. I know. What are you going to do with it? What are you
are you going to do with that? This frame won't be quite as simple to cover as when I did the divan bottom bed piece because I'm going to use up this scrap section which doesn't fit the whole lot. So if it was a larger piece, I'd just fold the whole lot over, you know, like you were wrapping a Christmas present. This one I'm going to have to go over the top and down two sides and then make panels for the two other sides because otherwise this is going to go to waste and I'd have to use a larger piece which is already useful for something else and I just think it's worth using up the scrap. things off the list a few more things off the list okay next up i think i'm going back to the leaks so i started clearing this bed the other day i've noticed that loads and loads of them have got flower spikes which means that they just really need to be taken out they're not going to last much longer this Enviromesh, it's all a bit Enviromesh themed today, isn't it? Sorry about that. This was specifically used for the Allium leaf miner. So it works really good for any of those small flying things like the carrot root fly. But in this case, Allium leaf miner. And although these leeks have gone gnarly, like I say, they are not infested with Allium leaf miner, which is a minor miracle on this site. Because normally, yeah, normally we wouldn't be able to keep le leeks in the ground this long because they'd just get all twisty and gnarly. So I'm going to store this. I'm not going to use this one again next year for the leaks. So I'm just going to store it in the back of the compost bins because we've got uh, pallets at the back of the compost bins. They make perfect storage for upright poles. So like the big bamboo canes and uh, pieces of netting and stuff like this. So that will stay there for a while now. I'm not going to be using that one again for the leaks that are coming this year because it was just slightly too low and the leaks have been pushing up against it. 
The reason we used that one this year was because I said before I went overboard on the leeks and we had an entire bed of them, which we just don't need. So I'm going to do half a bed this coming year and I will be using the box that was on the carrot box. God, it's like Environmesh box Tetris at the moment. But the leeks get quite tall and the one that I had over the carrot bed was just too big and not necessary. So that's where my leeks are gonna go next year. Not all of these have sprouted, which is quite nice. Although what has happened is, although it kept the allium leaf miner out, aphids have got in and they've just gone completely crazy because there's been nothing able to get in to eat them. So Enviromesh has its problems as well as its uses. I've said before, it's often recommended to keep white fly off uh, brassicas but I never use it for that because you just become completely infested rather than just partially infested. <laughs> so although I'm saying that these are gnarly I won't actually throw away the ones that have got the flower spikes in I'll cut the flower spikes out because the outside of the leek should still be absolutely fine. I'm going to weed this I'm going to cover it in mulch and then I think I'm going to get some sweet peas in here. Okay, so I'm gonna get the sweet peas in. Uh, the ones that I just brought up from home today, you know, I, had, I think I had four varieties. The ones that I brought in the garden center up north with Johanna when we were going towards Bath. Those sweet peas, the bargains. Uh, I'm gonna put them just up plain bamboo canes. They're gonna go into the bed that I've just taken the leeks out of. And we've had a couple of bad years for sweet peas. Um, some poor decisions <laughs> and some bad luck. So, for a couple of years, the first time it went wrong, we were trying to plant them up the back of the asparagus bed. And uh, that was just a complete fail because uh, next door used something to kill off some grass, not great. And it sprayed the sweet peas, so they all died. <laughs> first one, not great. Um, and then I put them up on the top bed and I hadn't realized how tall the corners was gonna get. So they were in the shade, which, you know, they don't love. And then last year, I kind of had this idea that because where I had them they drop we just let them go because they weren't a great year for them we let them go and they dropped loads of seed I just just thought they would come again magically without me having to do anything and I think we got one sweet pea plant come up so this year they're going up a proper teepee and we're hoping to have cut sweet peas again because two years with no sweet peas isn't great Oh, I've just put the, um, so where I took the leeks out, I've moved the old Enviromesh box that was on the carrots, you know, the big one. I've just stuck it on there because at the moment we're doing a bit of a shuffle, like moving things from one bed to another and not really knowing where, where to store anything. So that's why that's on there. I haven't done anything underneath it. <laughs> Thank you. 
so I will have to like put a string around that and tie them up but I'm just glad to have got them in the ground because they were starting to look a bit sad in those pots so they're just gonna stay there and then uh, I don't have any string at the moment which I know I know don't look at me like that how can you have an allotment with no string I'm ashamed if <laughs> I need to go and buy some string and so they're just going to sit there they'll kind of you know get their feet in the ground and be a lot happier there waiting for string rather than in pots I've just noticed while I've been up here actually so this is my incredibly poor specimen of an artichoke but look at that have you ever seen an artichoke flower on such a small plant <laughs> I think we're going to have to call it a day so at the moment it's still blue skies but it's meant to cloud over and I'm supposed to be going up to Hampstead Heath to meet Sarah so I'm going to walk up that way and uh, that's the rest of the afternoon really. Uh, I know I still haven't done any sewing. Will you be quiet the rube? Shoot scurly. Um, yeah so still haven't done any sewing but I've got a lot, I've got a list got everything ready I'm going to be doing sewing tomorrow so I think it is Hampstead Heath this afternoon sewing tomorrow tick oh actually before I leave I'm going to pick some of the green leaf chicory from the polytunnel and I'll we'll have that for lunch I'm just on my way up to Camden Road to meet Sarah and we're going to go and feed the crows in Hampstead Heath. Oh quick distraction we're just on our way up there opposite the roundhouse and look at this wisteria on the tool station. <laughs> the smell of it up the street just as you're walking along is so strong it's unbelievable. Right sorry let's go to the Heath. Welcome to the Heath. So Hampstead Heath is a bit like the North London equivalent of Richmond Park although Richmond Park's a bit bigger and much more managed and it's got deer. Hampstead Heath is much more wild, but they do have garden areas here. And I was hoping that the azaleas and the rhododendrons would be out because I'd seen them in Richmond Park and they are. But more exciting than that, look at this Davidia, the handkerchief tree. I don't think I've ever seen one looking quite so spectacular. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or if it's being kind of silhouetted, but the whole thing is completely covered in handkerchiefs. <laughs> 
of a sort. It's magnificent. And underneath it, all of these azaleas and rhododendrons, just so bright. Look at that. It's like it's kind of sucking all of the energy out of your eyeballs. It's so bright. They're beautiful. Look at these ones before they've opened up. They're like little lanterns, like little light bulbs. And these ones like almost like pine cones. Oh, they're so pretty. Reminds me, I must go to Isabella Plantation in Richmond Park, which is like really famed for its azaleas, camellias and rhododendrons. My God, look at this one. So it's come over all grey. There's like no sunshine. And this is basically providing the sunshine for the heath. <laughs> Although the majority of Hampstead Heath is sort of wild, like proper woodland, it does have on its northern point a stately home, which is Kenwood House, which has got these sort of sweeping grounds going down to a lake. And they have events here and they've got a cafe and all the sort of things you would expect from a National Trust stately home. There it is. And of course, they've got plenty of opportunity for buying things in the gift shop. <laughs> Um, more wisteria. The wisteria this year seemed to be just exceptional. Like, they didn't really do much last year. This year they just seem to have really gone bang. Right, I'm just waiting for Sarah, but I will show you down here. So this is like the cafe area, you know, where you can pay five pounds for a cup of tea. Lovely. <laughs> they've got this really nice bit up here that they've recently done up, which is quite sweet. And they do also sell plants which is quite nice but along with the five pound cup of tea you know it's about a tenner for a pot of rosemary but there we go the garrier looking tasselly and lovely in fact it's so big i'm going to film it probably no not necessarily what what is it called strawberry marshmallow it's whopping that's huge oregano is the yanks call it I'm going to leave these gorgeous birds and go and have a pint and we're going to go to the Spaniards Inn which is a pub that I used to drink in quite a lot but I haven't been here for absolutely ages so I moved away and also like lockdown you know there hasn't been a great deal of it <laughs> but the Spaniards Inn is a fantastic pub and it's got really entertaining history so it was built about 1580 I think and it's an old highwayman's pub which is pretty exciting and hilariously Dick Turpin's dad was the landlord. How good is that? <laughs> it's also got some good uh, literary mentions. Actually, I'm sorry about the wobbly camera. I'm trying to film surreptitiously, but yeah. <laughs> so it's got some really good literary mentions. It is in Dracula. It's mentioned in Bram Stoker's Dracula, and it's also in the Pickwick Papers. And supposedly Keats and Byron used to meet here, and Sarah is drinking some bright pink rhubarb beer, which is a bit suspect and tastes like fizzy pop. So I'm going to stick with the cider. <laughs> We're going to walk down towards um, Hampstead. Oh, look, yeah, Dickens gets his mention out here on a bench. Lovely. Oh, yeah, we're going to walk slightly uh, north and then south towards my tube stop, have a quick pint for the road on our way down there. And then tomorrow is going to be my seed sowing mission. So wish me luck.
good morning. It is the last day of April and I haven't sewn anything that was on my April sewing list. In fact, there's still things left over from the March sewing list that I haven't done. <sighs> but I'm determined, I've got up really early. I'm supposed to be going out today, but I've got up specifically early so that I can do the sewing before it's May. I will have them sewn in April. <laughs> They were meant to be spaced out, you know, just really leisurely throughout the month. I was going to do lettuces really early the day that I planted them out. You know, the little ones going to get those sewn for successional sewing, all that. I have done nada. Nada. So this morning is the morning for the entirety of April sewings. Right. Let me tell you what I'm sewing. First thing is the successional stuff. The lettuces, so I sewed some, what was it, a month and a half ago, got them out now, I'm gonna sew some more just to kind of keep them going. On the successional front, I'm gonna sew some more beetroot. So the lettuces are exactly the same varieties as I grew last time, except for one, which is lob joints. I know somebody's gonna be incredibly pleased that I'm growing these because I always mention what a great name this is, and uh, <laughs> I'm doing it, I'm doing it. So that's, I'm gonna get a whole load more of them in. The only exception is that I won't be doing the rocket because from now on the rocket's just going to be direct sown. So obviously I've also just planted out the beetroot that I sowed however long ago it was. Was it February that I sowed that or was that the beginning of March? Mm, can't remember but I've just planted them out and the badgers have dug them up but I've replanted them. <laughs> so I'm going to get some more of them in. I don't have any more of the Crosby's Egyptian I think it was but I'm just going to go with these two. The Chilkia which is a stripy one and Detroit Rubric is six. One thing that wasn't necessarily meant to be on my sewing list at this time of year was leeks. I don't know if you remember, I started some leeks off really, really early and they were looking fantastic. And then I killed them, but completely killed them. They were in the conservatory downstairs, tucked behind where I've got the cucumbers and I just completely missed them. They dried out and they fried. So there's nothing left of them. So I'm gonna have to start the leeks again, which means I'm behind with the leeks, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, next on the list is my absolute darling, chard. Uh, you know how I feel about chard. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing generally the same varieties that I do um, every year. The only problem is, is I've run out of Ford Hook Giant, so I've just got to get hold of that. It's not a difficult one to get hold of. I just hadn't realized I didn't have any. So I'm gonna be doing the Lucullus, which is just a joy. It's the really pale sort of lime green one that uh, cooks down almost to the extent of a spinach. It's so kind of soft and tender. That's a great one. I'm gonna be doing the Frankie's one, which is just called Bietta, which just, just means chard, but it's more of a perpetual spinach style chard. So it's got skinny stems. They're not particularly ribbed. They're quite smooth, quite flat, and just a joy. Obviously gonna be doing bright lights because I do bright lights every year. Although I've got to say for the last couple of years, um, I haven't had great success with bright lights, but I'm gonna give it another go because it's just nice to have that variety. And if they don't work, I've got rhubarb chard. I've been looking for peppermint chard for ages. I've seen it growing and it's beautiful. It's like really fluorescent pink stems with just like white ribs in it, a bit like um, like peppermint rock. That's I guess why that's, that's why it's called peppermint chard. <laughs> but yeah, I've been looking for that one. Can't find it. It's not the end of the world. I'm gonna do just a basic red chard, which is the rhubarb chard. Sticking with the leafy greens, um, I've got a couple of oriental type greens that I'm gonna be growing. I've got the dark beautiful red choy which is like a oily petrol purple pak choy you will have seen that from previous years I always grow that one I've got a Japanese spinach to try never tried this one before it is called komatsuna never tried it before gonna give that one a go and I've also got chijimisai this one I tried this one last year and it bolted really quickly I planted it in the cool and then we had a really really hot spell and it didn't like it so I'm gonna give it another go this year Okay, brassicas is something that I had originally intended to sow kind of March time. <laughs> I'm doing two types of Brussels sprouts. I'm doing fill basket and also crispus, which is the club root resistant one, but I can't find the packet. I know I've got some somewhere though. So there'll be two Brussels sprout varieties. I've also got to get the Cavallanero in. This is a vegetable that I wouldn't be without. It is so reliable and it's, we've only just finished eating the ones from last year now. And to be honest with you, I think this is probably gonna be the only kale we grow this year. In terms of like the kale type things, we've also got the cranberry, which is the sea kale. And 
obviously Alex has given me the cuttings of the Taunton Dean kale. As we're adding more and more of the perennial brassicas to the plot, I'm sort of like slowly cutting down on other ones. I mean, the Cavalinero is always going to be there because I just love it. But cabbages is something we're also cutting down on. So one of the main ways that we eat cabbage is as cabbage rolls, like stuffed cabbage leaves. And the tree cabbages that we've got just completely fill that role. So we don't need that. The only type of cabbage that we're going to be growing this year is spring cabbages. And I've got Greyhound, which is the classic green pointy one. And I'm also trying this one, Calibos, which is a purple spring pointy cabbage never tried it before and some purple sprouting i'm actually not late for these these were supposed to be sown end of april kind of beginning of may so these are actually just falling exactly where they're supposed to be rather than me playing catch up <laughs> and something else actually which i'm not kind of running late with it was going to be right at the very end of april are the cucurbits so obviously i tried those uh two cucumbers that was kind of the bob flower dew experimental cucumbers have been a raging success Actually, I've got two to pick downstairs now. They just keep coming. I'll show you. I'll show you what they're looking like. They got a bit fried in the sunshine, actually, because that conservatory, we were out for a whole day and it was hot. And so they got a bit frazzled, but they're coming green again at the top and they're still producing. But the other cucurbits, I will be sowing more cucumbers. So I will sow the same variety that I'm growing down there, which is the Socrates. I've also got a couple of more exciting ones to try that are three round ones. So I've grown crystal lemon before and I really liked it but it was a quite a different style of cucumber not just the way it looked but sort of how you ate it it had very very seedy inside and you did have to scoop them out like they weren't nice to eat and you did have to peel it so you'd get quite a thin like thin flesh but it was so tasty and it was so prolific I think it's worth it. The other thing that was quite nice about it is that it survived the red spider mite an awful lot better than my sort of standard cucumbers. So I'm gonna be going with them again and I've got three new ones to try. We've got lemon, crystal apple and green apple. And I think these are all gonna be very similar in style to the crystal lemon one that I grew. So I'm not gonna grow masses of them because we don't have the space. I'm probably gonna sow two of each and then hold on to one of them and give the other away if both germinate. So I was having a bit of trouble getting hold of courgette seed um, like earlier in the month. I'm gonna use that as my excuse why I didn't sow them earlier. <laughs> It wasn't that. I just didn't get around to it. But I couldn't find any seed of the varieties that I wanted. There was loads of yellow courgette seed around this year and I just don't like the flavour of yellow courgettes. So I've got two. One of them is a straight Frankie's one. It's a striata, so it's just a striped beautiful courgette. Couldn't get hold of any green tiger this year, which is my absolute favourite variety. I normally get them as plug plants from Delfland Organics, but we all know what happened to Delfland Organics. So I wasn't able to get hold of any of them. But so I'm doing the striata, which is the kind of the pale and dark green striped one. And then I've just got bog standard green. Look, it doesn't even have a variety. It's just called zucchini. So I think that will be a courgette. I'm not trying any of the round ones again this year. I didn't have a great success with them last year and actually I didn't enjoy them that much. The only one I'm sticking with is the Patterson Gagat because tasty. Trombocinos, something I'm growing for the first time this year. It's not the first time I've eaten them, but it's the first time I'm actually growing them myself. They're quite a nice, like a tie over between a courgette type squash and a, like a winter squash because you could, they grow on a climbing vine. So these are gonna grow up the same archway as my achocha are this year i'm gonna have these in there and you can eat them fresh and then they're very much like a courgette a little bit more pasty than a courgette but they've got similar flavor but you can also let them dry off and have them as a winter squash later on talking of winter squash that's something else that i'm cutting down variety wise massively this year we're going to carry on with crown prince because you grow that every year and it's beautiful i'm going to have another go at the marina de Chogia because the one that we did get that sort of half ripened had a really, really good flavour. And I kind of have a feeling that if it's a good year for them, that's gonna be blinding. And we're gonna throw in some Ichikokuri squash. So that's the three that we're growing. And that's it for pumpkins, really. The only other thing in that sort of family 
got my Minnesota midget melons to go in as well. So that is what I'm going to attempt to sow this morning before I go to Kew Gardens. On top of that, I've got a huge wadge of seed, which I'm going to take up to the allotment because they're all ready for direct sowing. And that's things like the carrots. Now we've cleared that carrot bed, sow the carrots directly into that bed. I'll also be sowing coriander into that bed as well. There's also turnips and spring onions. So I'm going to get them in. Oh, and rocket. Yeah. Turnips, spring onions, rocket and dill. So if I can get all of them in, I will be back to where I was supposed to be. <laughs> okay, made excellent progress on the sewing. Not everything's in, but most things are in and I got it done in April. I mean, it's now May. <laughs> it is now uh, the 1st of May or is it the 2nd of May? What day is it? No, it's the 1st of May today. So happy May. So I did go to Kew Gardens yesterday. I wasn't going to film it, but there was a couple of things that were exceptional. So it was like no sunshine. It was a really grey day, but have a look at these tulips. They were just so beautiful and they were just kind of, it was quite a breezy day as well. So they were just kind of swaying around and that was really lovely. But the main reason that I went over there was to see what their vegetable gardens were doing. So, you know, the student ones are on one side and then they've got like the main like Kew Gardens vegetable garden on the other side. Well, have a look at this. The vegetable garden isn't even in existence. They've ripped it all up and have replaced those gorgeous grass paths with um, gravel and like hard standing and um, metal edges, which is a real shame. But they do say it's gonna be opening spring 2022. So it should be really soon, although it doesn't look like it's gonna have much in it this year which is a real shame. And the student patches didn't have very much going on in them either. I did swing round past, you know, the medicinal garden, the herb section, and I was quite pleased to see that their cranby, their um, sea kale, isn't looking as fine as mine is at the moment, so that was pleasing. However, however, their, uh, you know, I showed you uh, when we were up at the allotment, was it yesterday, day before, I can't remember what it was, like three days ago and I was saying that my artichoke has started flowering even though the plant's only about a foot tall well this is what I want my artichokes to look like I want them to be gorgeous and huge and feathery and not stunted <laughs> but yeah so that was my really brief trip to Coo I am going to go back there sometime in the next week or so and I'll take you because I did wander up to the Bluebell Woods, but, but I didn't do any filming and they were just starting to come out. So um, in next week or so, if I find a sunny day, absolute beauty. And I'll take you up there and to see the wisteria. Do you remember when we went to Kew before to see Sana and Cinny and Sarah? A lot of S's in that one. And I showed you the like this, what's it called? Like the pergola that's got that incredible wisteria all around it. We've got to go back and see that. What with the wisteria being so exceptional this year? Yeah, so I'm going to make this really quick because um, it's another long video. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say big cheers. It's May. Fantastic. Um, May, my main sowing for May is going to be beans. And I've got to make a decision about the beans because I've got loads of varieties to try out. And I don't have that much space for them. So... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'll show you my sewings next week when we've got a bit more time. I'll also do a mushroom update because quite a lot's been going on on the mushroom front. And uh, all I'm going to say is a huge cheers. So, yeah, happy May. And um, I'll see you next week.